During the design phase of your process, you've taken some time to develop and write clear performance objectives. While these objectives may or may not be of extreme value to the learner or stakeholders, they are critical for you as an instructional designer. The performance objectives will provide a base for developing assessment instruments during the development phase. You were introduced to assessments in the design phase so that you could start to think about them as you wrote your performance objectives. Now let's see how we can couple assessment items with our performance objectives. How do we measure progress? In today's learner-centered instructional environment, it seems that everyone is looking for teachers and educators to provide evidence of learning. Assessment items which are learner-centered get linked to instructional goals and ultimately measure progress and quality. Another benefit of assessments is that they provide a way for the learner to reflect on their own performance and take responsibility for their learning. Research by Dick and Carey and others suggests that objective tests are best for measuring verbal and intellectual skills objectives. The word objective in this context is synonymous with the criteria from your performance objectives. When developing assessment instruments, you'll be looking at the criteria in your performance objectives to develop the best instrument for measuring. Some intellectual skills objectives may not be able to be measured using objective tests, and for those situations, another type of assessment method may be necessary. There are some common types of tests that designers use when they want to assess verbal and intellectual skills. These types include entry skills tests, pre-tests, practice tests, and post-tests. Choosing whether or not to use any or all of these types of tests will be a task for the instructional designer. Entry skills tests provide a way to assess the mastery a learner may have with the prerequisite skills. Remember, you won't be providing any instruction for any of the prerequisite skills, and some learners may not have a good handle on those skills. Some designers choose to use entry skills tests to try and ensure that the learners will all be coming into the instruction at an appropriate level. Pre-tests are different than entry skills tests in that they are a way to provide a baseline for where the learners are at with new skills. While they may not have any knowledge or experience with the new skills, the pre-tests will help to see if some learners are going to be ahead and possibly bored with the new instruction because they already have some level of proficiency. When coupled with post-tests, Pre-tests are also good for establishing progress. Practice tests are used often and provide a way to provide for active participation on the part of the learner. Practice tests help to achieve mastery of some skills and also provide periodic feedback for both the instructor and the learner. Post-tests are probably the most common way to measure whether or not objectives have been met. We often see post-tests in most all types of instruction. How do we develop good assessment instruments? The only way to be able to measure any level of mastery with a skill is to make sure that the test item criteria matches that of the performance objective. You have, after all, gone to great lengths to prepare concise and clear performance objectives. You are also developing your instruction around those objectives. Having a test item that is congruent with a clear performance objective will allow for measuring learning. Some designers wonder just how many test items to have for a given objective. Research suggests that verbal information skills may not require as many test items as intellectual skills objectives because appropriate responses may be easier to see with just a few test items for ver verbal information skills. Designers also think about what type of test to use. There are multiple kinds, including completion, short answer, matching, multiple choice, essay, product, portfolio, and live performance tests. When faced with this question, designers take into account as much as possible, including the learner, the environment, the quality, 
and the significance of the instruction or the impact of the instruction. Rubrics have become somewhat of a standard in many disciplines and especially in education. As you develop instruction and assessment instruments, consider providing rubrics up front for the learner to make clear to them how they will be assessed. Sometimes we think that only sit down, close book, multiple choice or essay tests are the only way to develop an objective. There are, however, many different ways to develop objective assessment instruments. Many designers and teachers like to have project-based tests or portfolios or performance-based tests. These are all objective types of assessment that can work as a good way to measure quality and success. Using assessment instruments is likely the only way that a designer is going to be able to measure success of instruction. From an instructional design process perspective, assessment instruments should be considered during the design phase when you're writing performance objectives. As you move into the development phase, develop your assessment instruments and ensure that they are matched to your performance objectives.